you might have seen videos on the PSBB on our channels before from Prima Power, but this one's slightly different. So Barry, talk us through this whole setup you have behind us. Right, so as you say, it's been on your channel before. This one is the latest version. So behind me, we have our fast loading storage system, which is bringing materials to the punch and shear, uh, shear machine, shear genius behind me, which is taking the materials and creating the part blanks. So that will be punching, it will be adding any forms, and then when it's finished doing that, and the part is a part that's still attached to the mother sheet, we have a 90 degree angle shear that crops the part out from the sheet and brings it down the line through a labeling system onto this unit that's right here. Now, just before we move on to this section, why is that different to normal, uh, normal shearing machines where you may have waste? Yeah, so a usual punch system has no means of cropping out the part other than going around it with what we call a slitting tool. A slitting tool for every punch that it uh, takes is removing scrap metal. When we use a shear, we're using common cutting edges because they're square cut parts. So one crop and we've cut the edge of the part that we're releasing from the mother sheet and of course the edge of the next part along. So there is no waste. The material yield from a shear is the best you will ever get. There is no material skeleton. And that must be really big for customers who aren't just stuck with that waste, but also trying to get rid of that at the end of the day. So anybody with just a normal punch will always have a problem, A, of disposing of the skeleton, and B, of the manual handling in disposing of the skeleton, because they're going to take what's left of, in this case, a three by 1.5 meter sheet. They're gonna to have to fold it up, they're gonna to have to put it in a scrap bin and then get rid of it. There is no scrap other than what you have chopped out from this machine, there is nothing else. So talk us through the next section of this line. So the next section, this is a line obviously at the Euroblex show in Hanover. So normally between the punch and shear and this unit here, we will have some form of a buffering system. That is balancing the load between the punch and shear and the panel bender. It is also allowing us to introduce parts in from other processes and take parts away that are not gonna be bent. Right here, right next to me, this is a bend turning unit. So if a part comes through and is the wrong way around for bending, this unit can take the part, flip it upside down, present it back to the panel bender, and the panel bender can then pick it up and take it through the next stage of the process, which is to create the bent part. Now, obviously, what, what's the advantages of having the bend turner in there? Because is that a stage where normally you would need human interaction to make sure it's all set right before it yeah, gets to the end process. Absolutely, so what you'll find quite often is that the punch is not just doing punching. It'll be doing forming work as well. It may be adding tapped hole features, it could be creating up forms, it could be creating louvers, and if they're on the wrong side of the material, that for the panel bender, for the actual finished component, the machine has to switch them upside down, and that's exactly what this unit does before it then gets to the next step, which is the, in this case, the new panel bender. Now talk us through the new panel bender. So we've been doing panel benders for a long, long time, fully servo electric, so very, very low energy, uh, no oil waste, no, um, no hydraulics or anything like that to worry about. What's new on this one, this is a 2.7 meter machine, we've produced different models, but this is our larger bending height machine. So this has a maximum bending height of 264 millimeters, which is quite a considerable increase over the other models in the range. So that's making its debut here at uh, Euroblack uh, this year. Now, what have customers or, um, or the other people that are walking around the show said when they've seen this? Because that is, a, like you said before, that is a very big jump from the machine before it. Yeah, I think the words I've heard before are mind blowing. Um, you know, the fact that anybody, if you stand and watch a panel, a panel bender absolutely amazes them anyway. Uh, but the ability now to create bigger box profiles on this panel bender means that they can, you know, make much larger parts from it. You know, we've got the maximum bending length there, which is 2.7 meters. Biggest one we do is actually way over that, it's just shy of four meters. Uh, but we can create much deeper boxes as well. So, you know, it's one of the things about Prima Power. It's like we've said in other videos before, we're very solution orientated. We listen to what our customers want and we create a solution for them. Uh, and in this particular case, this line is made up of modules. It's made up of automation modules. It's made up of, ma uh, of different machines because it's the right solution for the customer's particular requirements. And just one last thing before we finish, obviously, this line now is processing all the way through. 
and when you get to the end you actually get a finished draw now i don't want to try and take one and i'm on the plane just saying um but you've just mentioned that this is a module system so is there customizable options to add and replace because obviously like we've said before not every customer is the same no 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 um, it's extremely customizable. As I said before, there's a tower of raw material feeding this machine. It could be connected into our, what we call our night train storage system, which is multiple towers full of multiple cassettes of, of raw materials. We can change the shear, we have different models in there. We can change the buffering system. We can change the input that goes into the panel bender. The panel bender is there, we can change the discharge options off the panel bender. So here, uh, we're actually producing this, this draw system um, because of the constraints of being in an exhibition hall. But quite often we'll have automation on the output side of the panel bender. We could be assembling parts. Uh, we could be discharging them just as we've seen on our, um, our press break with a robot, discharging them and stacking them all up in neat piles to go on to the next part of the process. Or even use more automated guided systems to take them away to the assembly stage. And I think that just shows exactly what Prima Power is about, Absolutely. is that you are fully customer focused. Yeah. To quote the acronym of Prima in Prima Power, progress in manufacturing automation.